Hi, it's Vex, and today we continue our call time deck text. That's right. We are so excited for this one. This is really exciting for me. This is Orval, Orvar, the all form, replacing strictly better than Misform Ultimus, because Misform Ultimus has the same casting costs. Let's read it. Three in a blue. Also a 3 3, also a legendary creature, shapeshifter. Also changing. That's where it ends with Misform Ultimus and Orvar. Orvar. Because Orvar has a special ability here. It says whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, if it targets one or more other permanents you control, so one or more permanents targeted, create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents. So, you know, if you target two things, you only get one thing. But you choose which one thing you get. Then the cool part, which probably won't come up that often, but can is the whenever when a spell or ability and opponent controls causes you to discard discard create a token that's a copy of target permanent so not of orval just target permanent if you have to discard it which doesn't come up because orval is in your command zone you don't really uh um discard very often unless some cyclonic rifts you and makes you discard i don't know for some weird reason so orval is all about targeting uh permanents and making copies that's insane imagine if you had like a consecrated sphinx on the battlefield and you're like okay i have a consecrated sphinx i'm gonna target it and make another consecrated sphinx so every time you draw a card i will draw four cards all right which that means you have to have tons and tons of tokens with orval orvar wherever it is um you know i got the natural tokens here right you know some bird tokens uh foretell token um, you do target the secret is targeting islands a lot so you do target your islands quite a bit so what I recommend is I just have islands here a bunch of islands to target to make more island copies of and then I have my empty tokens because there's too many things that I'm gonna copy and I don't know what they are I do have another stack of 50 which is kind of crazy but I have this to start off with my dry race um, marker here unfortunately it's red not blue but you know it is what it is um, okay so that aside always have your tokens and such okay this is different than the rest of the deck text I like to do is going over cards and I like to go over combos first but this this deck has tons of combos and I'm not gonna go all over all of them because there's like more combos that I even know what to do with um, and you know me I love my combo I love doing storm uh, so this actually has lots of infinite mana combos or infinite combos because of how Orval is situated. If you can, um... so one of the easiest combo, one of the best cards for Orvar is this card, Whim of Volrath. It's uh, one blue and has buyback two. So if you pay two in a blue, you get to put it back in your hand. Um, I suggest you read buyback. This is old text, but let's read it anyways. You may pay additional two when you play the spell. If you do, put it in your hand instead of your graveyard. Um, as part of resolving this. So what Wim, Wim of Vorath does, is it doesn't really matter what it does, it just targets things. Change the text of target permit by replacing all instances of one color, word, or basic land type with another until end of turn. That doesn't really matter. All, all, all that matters is you're just targeting things because of Orvar. So hypothetically, if you have Orvar on the battlefield, you have, uh, so I, I got a bunch of these cards. These are like combo cards, so I'll show you example combos. Um, what you want is like a coveted jewel or something like this, right? You go whim of Volrath, um, target coveted jewel, pay your buyback cost, right? Covered jewel enters the battlefield, draw three cards. So you just draw three cards. What's cool part is you tap add three mana of any one color. Um, this doesn't go infinite, obviously, because you'll deck yourself. What you do is tap three mana again with Orval on the battlefield. We just do is point this here. You could say change, so you say target, but and then you resolve, say I want to change all the words from um, blue to uh, black to blue, whatever. It doesn't really matter because there's no color words in here, but as long as you target it, you make another copy here of Coveted Jewel. Bam, draw another three cards. Tap Coveted Jewel again, the new one, the new copy one. Do the same thing, draw three cards. Um, so you don't net mana. So what you want to do is you want to have this card, Sapphire Medallion, on the battlefield. And it does reduce the buyback cost of Wilm of, Wilm of Volrath. So what you can do here is if you have Sapphire Medallion, let's see here. You have Coveted Jewel. You pay uh, one in a blue. You could 
um, target cover to jewel right here. Buy back to your hand, make a new cover to jewel. Uh, so you can tap this to use whim of Volrath. Then you have one mana floating. So you have one blue floating here. Then what you do is you just, oh man, I'm smuggling, uh, smudging this. You tap this, do the same thing, one blue, floating here, and then you keep going on and on. You can draw your deck, don't deck yourself, find like Cyclonic Rift or something, try to get enough mana. Now if you want to produce more mana, what you do is, oh man, I can't believe I messed this up. You gotta be careful with your tokens and dry erase. Um, what you want to do is if, if you want more mana, you would copy Sapphire Medallion, bounce back. So you have two Sapphire Medallions right here. You'd bounce this back, and then now you pay one mana to target co Coveted Jewel, bounce it back, because the Sapphire Medallion reduces the whole buyback cost. Then you make your new one, then you net two mana. Um, you, you win by, you know, you, you could do Cyclonic Rift your opponent, you could copy some more creatures of your, your own, an Alpha Strike after Cyclonic Rifting. You could do all, all these things, because this is at instant speed, right? So you do at the end of whoever, whomever's turn, draw a bunch of cards, Cyclonic Rift, and, and go at it. So this is a really cool card here. Uh, so that's one that's one of the main combos. This is the most powerful card here because it has buyback, but has the cheapest buyback of two mana. There's other cards that have, you know, I think a two and a blue buyback, so it's a little more expensive buyback. The cool part is it's, it just targets any permanent. So if you want, you could, um, see we have an island here. You could target an island make an island copy right here. I, I just have snow covered islands as my regular islands and copies are just regular islands um, right there. So you can do things like that. Um, I have uh, ways to tutor out, either Whim of Volrath or Sapphire Medallion. So we have Spellseeker or Tribute Mage. Remember, you, you could also copy Spellseeker and, and get more stuff from your deck like Cyclonic Rift, such mystical tutor. This is just in there to tutor, it's not, um, but uh, it's 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 not copyable. But that's that's why you want permanent space copying because tribute mage you get sapphire medallion. You also get isochron scepter from uh, tribute mage and lots of other things too. But those are the two main ones you want to get from tribute mage. And then you can copy it by targeting it if you have Orvar on the, the battlefield. Uh, the classic thing is um, isochron scepter imprinting dramatic reversal. So you have a coveted jewel. Like if you had this situation here, you could tap this. Tap this for three, is that here? Like that. Um, tap for three, use a three to um, use Icecron Scepter to put Dramatic Reversal on the stack, untap this, this will untap Icecron Scepter itself. Keep doing it, get infinite mana, stuff like that. Do whatever you want with infinite mana. Whim of Volrath, Volrath, somebody to death. All right, so those are the main cards. Uh, example combo here, I have these cool little empty tokens there. If you want, if you uh, could really commit to Orval, you could do um, use a uh, a Sharpie, and it'll be on there forever. Uh, but if you're not that committed, don't use 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 the dry erase markers. Okay, so those are the cool cards that I'm gonna start this deck tech off with. Uh, the tutors here. You have the most important card, Whim of Volrath. Keep that there. Sapphire Medallion. Ice Conceptor, Dramatic Reversal, and Coveted Jewel. So those are there. Whim of Volrath. Okay, so I know you might not get Whim of Volrath, so there's other ways to target permanents. And I have a bunch of them. Unfortunately, they, they do almost nothing. Some of them can trip. They do almost nothing unless you have Orval on the, the battlefield. I don't usually have decks that have cards that rely on the commander, but because the commander is so specific and asks for... A very specific thing to happen. I, you know, I'm I'm willing to concede my point for this deck. Um, so usually you only cast these if you have Orval or Orvar on the battlefield. I wouldn't cast Orval like for four mana and not have a mana to follow up and copy things with. So okay, so always you know hold these till you have Orvar. What you want to do? So I have a bunch of these cards. So we have Architect's Will. You know, it doesn't really matter what it does. Put a flood counter on target land, which is you want to target your land. Uh, that land's an island. It's probably already an island. In addition to its other types, um, as long as it has a flood counter. And the cool part is if you control a mer merfolk, draw a card. So since Orvar is a changing, it is a merfolk. 
So if he stays on the battlefield, you're, you're going to get to draw a card. So it, it really does nothing. All, all you want to do is target something so, to make a copy, which is kind of cool because if you target an island, this is a one-mana ramp spell, which is insane because the island will come in play untapped and you get to draw a card. Can't trip two. Clock spinning. This has buyback three, so it's uh, you know close to whim of Vol Volrath, but you need three Sapphire medallions to reduce it back to one blue. And it d doesn't really matter what it says. <laughs> it just targets something. Dreams Grip, you know, target something again. So if you notice all, all the, the text of these cards, the only thing that matters is do something to target permanent. I mean, when you play the game, you still have to follow the Oracle text and do something, but we just want to do something so we can get a copy of it. Same for G Giga Giles, you tap target permanent, but the thing is you target. Um, it's got Replicate. That's not really that important because if you replicate it, you don't get a million copies. You get one copy because you only cast Giga Giles once. Because this, this is on cast, not on target, which is different than some other um, versions that say that. Mind game, so this is kind of like the same whim, uh, whim of Vorath, but it's got two of the blue buyback, which I talked about earlier. Tap target, ar ar tap target artifact creature I land. This is the worst of the three buyback ones with um, clock spinning be the second best, being the second best. Because it has colorless, which Sapphire Medallion helps uh, reduce the cost. Thermal Flux, which just has a draw a card clause, which is really cool because I love the draw a card clause. But at the beginning of your next, up, uh, next turn's upkeep. Trait Doctoring. Again, these, these weird things, they have, you know, change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another one. That doesn't really matter unless it, unless you target your opponent's um, cards. All, all it does, all that really matters, again, it says it's just target permanent. I know, it's so funny. It's like, you don't you don't really care what the rest of the card does. All, all, all you want is a one mana, that um, one mana spell that says target permanent. Twiddle, you know, tap or untap target artifact creature and land. That's cool because you could... Um, Tap an island, twiddle it, untap it, and make a copy of it. So this is ma makes mana with uh, Orvar. Glam Glamour die. So this is cool because it has retrace. Again, it has the, you know change instances of another instance. Uh, but but you use retrace from the graveyard. You know discard land, um, draw, uh, discard land, recast it from the graveyard. Hidden strings. This is cool. This is. Can be another potential combo with the Icecron Scepter because it, it can untap itself and sub something else while copying, while making a copy of Orvar. Okay, so um, a lot of things. So these are target permanent. Most of the time is target permanent or land. Um, like Twiddle doesn't target an enchantment, so you can't you know can't copy your own Ristic Study, for example. But it is what it is. It, it does target multiple things. These are now the target creature spells. Um, and Cerulean Wisps. So we do have a bunch of creatures here you want to target. Again, if you, you have to be careful because you can't target... Uh, I mean, you can't target Orvar, uh, but you'll make a copy that's legendary, so you have to pick one. So the legendary rule applies, but we have clones that get rid of that, like Sakashima with a thousand faces. Cerulean Wisps, target creature, becomes blue, draw a card, doesn't really matter. Untap that creature, so it has a tap ability, but I don't think we have very many or any tap abilities on our, on our creatures. Dive down. This is cool. This could help protect Orvar. I know it doesn't make an extra token copy, but it you know it's good there for protection. Fleeting distraction. It does have a draw card clause. Target creature gets minus one, minus zero. It doesn't really matter, but it could, gives you a draw card. It's pretty neat. Leap. Target creature gets flying. Draw a card, which is great. Love, love making making a copy of something and then drawing a card. Museum skin again is a way to protect Orvar if necessary, or you know make copies. Shadow Rift, target creature gains shadow, draw a card, that's a good one. Twisted Image, switch creatures, power and toughness, draw a card. Ghostly Flicker, this could, um, if, if somebody's uh, targeting Orvar, and um, actually this has multiple targets. I should have put in the first set, but I forgot. Uh, I thought it was for creatures until I just read it. Um, what you could do is you could flicker Orvar, somebody's targeting your commander, and then flicker a land or something or a creature and make 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 a copy of that creature because because you get to choose one of the two targets. So you have your targeting spells here, a lot of them there. Then on to the next part of the deck here, the value creatures, right? 
let's put this part aside. This is the rest of the deck, but all right. So the value of creatures that you want to copy or help you enact your game plan. Snapcaster Mage is amazing because it helps you get your one mana card back from the graveyard so you can cast it again, targeting maybe Snapcaster Mage itself, which is great. You make another Snapcaster Mage and then tar and play another spell. So you make an army of Snapcasters, which is really cool. Now this is not as cool as Snapcaster, Ar Archaeomancer. I guess it's cool because it's not an instant speed like Snapcaster, but, but you could do, you know, meh. Ar Archaeomancer, get something back from your hand, target it, get, get the same thing back from your hand, target it again, so you can continue to make, you know, as long as you have the mana to do more and more Ar Archaeomancers. Master of Waves, I mean, playing a blue deck. Imagine copying Master of Waves. For each Master of Waves you copy, your elementals get plus one, plus one. So it's really good here. So that's, that's one way to win, make lots of Master of Waves and attack Alpha Strike. Glenelandra, Glenelandra Archmage is really good because it has the uh, persist ability, can counter target non-creature spell. The tokens don't have persist, but you can essentially make tokens and sack it and counter some non-creature spells if necessary. Mall Drifter, so it's kind of cool because like when you copy, you get multiple mall, mall drifters. Usually, like a lot of these things, like you see, go into like a blink type of deck, like uh, my Brago deck. Uh, and then you have Mold Drifter, but now you get more and more copies of Mold Drifter, so you don't have to worry that the creature will survive when you blink it. Well, I, I guess you still have to worry about it. if you target it, the creature has to still survive uh, for the ability to happen. Of course, when I talked about Consecrated Sphinx, what's better than one Consecrated Sphinx? Sphinx, two or three. Now, this draw. Uh, Draw a card is you may draw two cards, so don't deck yourself. Don't draw that many cards. Peregrine Drake, you could target it, untap some more lands, target it again. I think I believe this will go infinite whim of Volrath and infinite Peregrine Drakes and infinite mana. And you don't need the reducers because untaps up to five lands. You need at least four lands, uh, three for whim, targeting this, and then one to tap to get the mana. And then you keep cloning those and make infinite mana. That's that's another thing. One of the best win conditions is uh, Agent Treachery. You get, you get your infinite mana, you play whim a million times, you steal everything, then you win. Or Venser, Shaper, Savant. Uh, you could bounce everything, so it's just be uh, the like one-sided apocalypse. You, you have everything, they have nothing. More bouncing, Scourge of Fleets. Scourge Fleet is great. Um, or, I mean, we are playing a high, uh, a, a, you know, semi spell slinger deck with a lot of spells. Talran is very good. Again, a, a backdoor way of, you know, using the spells to do something, make creatures, if your Orvar has, you know, been killed so many times you can't recast it. So, so those are the, our creature packages we want to definitely copy with Orvar. Then the cool part is what we want, let me skip to this one, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, right there. Then you have two Orvars. Can't complain about that. Oh, let's just skip to this one. Then you have the other Sakashima, the Imposter, which keeps its name, so now you have more Orvars. Spark Devil, which makes a non-legendary copy. Uh, more Orvars. Classical Mimic. You know, don't don't forget that it's a land. Don't be afraid to play this as a land on turn one, two, you know, whenever you need it. it makes a copy of your own creature, crackling counterpart. So, you know, going with the theme. Make a copy of your creature. Lithoformer engine. Copy your spell, your your triggered ability on Orvar, the spell. Um, it's probably better to copy triggered ability because it costs one less. Because the spell is the same thing, but if you want to target something else, or target permanent spell you control. So Lithform Engine, more copying. All right, so we are playing Mono Blue, and we need some protection. Of course, we're gonna play counter spells. Of course, we're gonna play cheap counter spells because we're probably just you know targeting things left and right. We need to keep a little bit of mana up. So we have Swan Song, the old school counter spell, Fierce Guardianship, free counter spells. And since we're playing Blue, and we don't have to worry about having like like the triple blue pips on Cryptic Command, why not? 
it's fun. I love playing Crypto Command. I love it in Commander just as much as I love it in the um, modern format. Sublime Epiphany. Oh, I can't wait to play this card. It does uh, make a token of, token that's a copy of target creature you control, so it does still have the copy ability, which is so cool. Um, and then uh, it also targets. So if you have Orvar on the battlefield, you target a creature, Orvar will trigger, and you get a Sublime Epiphany copy. So that's cool too. Right there, and this, of course you want to copy this, right? What is better than asking an opponent to pay one when you have to ask them to pay two, pay three, pay four? Do you want to pay four for that? Oh man, Ristic Study. Of all the most annoying cards you want to copy, this is the card you want to copy. Ristic Study right there. So these are the counter spells. These are some utility spells. Slendy Vision, again, these mold double face cards are strong and I know that players have a hard time uh, just flipping this over and just doing Slim the Isle. Like, I, I think it's just mentally they say, I can't give up this value. I'm gonna top deck a land. Don't do that. If, if you need the land, need this as a land, play as a land. I play as a, as a land like 80% of the time and I'm fine with it. So that is the reason why I have these in there. Don't be afraid to play them as lands. I know players just can't resist value. I'm like off camera right here, sorry about that. They just can't resist value, but resist the value. Play it as a land. Play so you so can you know continue playing the game. <laughs> uh, we have a removal sweep. Blue is cool. Pongify. You can target your own um, permanents. Uh, I wouldn't really do it. Save it as removal spell. The new. I can't. I can't believe they printed this card. I, I I'm in shock that they actually printed this card. Raven form because blue is not supposed to have artifact removal. Now black. Doesn't either, but black has Gate to Phyrexia, which is printed, you know, in, in Antiquities. And they can kind of remove artifacts. But Raven Form literally says Exile Target Artifact or Creature. Its controller creates a 1-1 one, one blue bird creature token with flying, which that doesn't even matter. It's a 1-1 one, one flying bird. You're willing to give him a 2-2 two, two flying bird by, by casting Swan Song. You literally can now exile, not even destroy, exile target artifact. Even though it's a sorcery and costs three, this is insane this is a game changer i believe this is almost a blue staple a mono blue staple like every mono blue deck i make has to have this card because i i literally you literally can't destroy artifacts and now you can you can even exile it's even better you got reality shift here and of course cyclonic rift you know cyclonic rift and then okay so besides the other one mana can tripping uh, targeting protection spell we have lots of tap plating it's an amazing protection spell. You and permits you control gain hex both until end of turn. So it's kind of like half of a um, of a, a hero in it, like intervention. It, it makes a one one, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, you you just need some protection for all your stuff. It's amazing. Lightning greaves, swift of boots. So those are the usual protection suite. There, of course, of course, of course. I'm playing mono blue. And I'm playing back to basics. Look, I'm gonna be honest. This is a totally fair card in EDH. People have gotten so greedy with their mana bases, playing Golos, playing Kenrith, playing three color decks, playing Atraxa. It's time to punish them. Say, hey, you need to play more basics or you need to play less colors. I think EDH is totally fair to punish people who are have greedy mana bases and play um, a deck Full of tons of colors. There's gotta be some punishment. There's gotta be a, my mono red decks all have blood moon. My mono blue decks all have back to basics. Uh, and I totally think it's totally fair. Anyways, I, I know I keep ranting about these cards, but don't be sad when you get hit with back to basics because if you're playing multicolor deck and you don't have enough basics, you deserve to get hit with this. So remember that. And yes, I have been back to basics a lot on my five color decks. And you know what? I totally accept that because I take the risk of playing five colors and take the risk of these hate cards like this. Okay, anyways. We have our ramp package, Solemn Sin Lacrum. Copying Solemn is really cool too, so copying Soul Ring is really cool. Copying Wayfarer's Bottle, copying any of this stuff is really cool, tell you the truth. Mindstone, Thought Vessel, we have Cage Sun, copying that's really cool too. Uh, again, you, you can go Infinite Mana with Whim of Volrath, Cage Sun, copying some islands, copying more Cage Suns, stuff like that. 
All right, so we have those here. I know it's so cool to copy soul rings and stuff. I mean, I'm excited to copy soul rings. All right, so we have quickly to the land package here. We have ancient tomb. You know, we want cheat out, cheat on mana a little bit. I mean, if we get, we get this gets back to the basic, it doesn't really matter because I'm playing a lot, a lot of islands. Nykthos, uh, I think monocolor decks they should usually always play Nykthos if 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 it's appropriate. I mean, if you play mono red but you do an artifact theme like uh, my Magna deck, there's no reason to play Nyk Nykthos. But I think I do have that in that deck. But I, you, you know what I'm saying? Mystic Sanctuary, it's an island. You can get something back. Castle Vantress, scrying. So the cool part about it is Orvar is Orvar is a changeling, and because it's a changeling, you can play things like Riptide Laboratory. You can turn target wizard you control to his owner's hand. I do have a lot of wizards in the deck, um, so it applies to more than just Orvar. You can turn it to your owner's hand, try to save it, or just replay it like Snapcaster is a wizard. And this is a cool card right here. And I hope it gets reprinted in Times Square Remastered, but who knows? Swarm Yard. You just add one colorless. Fine. Tap, regenerate target insect, rat, squirrel, uh, spider, or squirrel. And guess what? It's all of them because it's the all form. That's so cool. More graveyard hate, scavenger grounds, war room. I love this card in monocolor decks, um, except for I would say except for mono green because green's got I think better card draw than than blue in EDH at this point. To tell you the truth. So it helps you know you got a way to draw some cards. Relicary Tower, you you know, sometimes drawing lots of cards. You know, I have a good hand size. I have my snow covered islands, all from Caldheim, except I just don't have enough. So I have three from four from Modern Horizons. Uh, one day I'll have enough. But uh, anyways, that's the deck. Um, if you want, you can leave your uh, questions in the comments about combos and stuff. It's hard to go through them all because there's so many, and there's so many that, that I think this deck's so cool because you get to discover all these little combos you have. Um, that's that's a cool part about EDH, you, the discovery ability. So I'm gonna shuffle this deck up, get ready to do goldfish. But if you enjoy the deck tech, give the video a thumbs up. You know, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to get notified when I do new videos. Um, I have the uh, deck deck list in the description below. I also have my TCG player affiliate link if you want to click on that to help support the channel. And then we're just gonna shuffle this bad boy up and we'll be right back. All right, we are back. So let's see what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, uh, playing this on camera is fine. Over spell table as long as you get this and your empty tokens. It's, it's fine. Uh, the thing is, like, I wouldn't use the copy tokens because it's hard to figure out which one's which. I know you can put them next to the dude, um, but it's good to have, you know, right on these tokens. Anyways, let's check our opening hand. We've got two islands, exactly what we want. Perfect. Sapphire Medallion, turn two, exactly what we want. Glass Pool Mimic. Okay, so let's check this out. We have no turn one play. It's usually turn one Soul Ring. These are not turn one plays at all. This one. Uh, it's not a turn one play because it does nothing. Uh, so this glass bowl mimic right here for all intents and purposes is now a glass bowl shore right there. Um, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, I got two lands. I might be able to top deck another land and use this as a, um, a clone. Thing is, turn one is the best time to play these lands. And right now if you go turn one glass bowl mimic, bam, you're like solid. I mean, I guess you can draw your card to start off with. It's not a land. And you don't know if you don't have, you don't know if you're going to get lands. So what you want to do is just stay safe, play your glass bowl, mimic. Don't always hold on to value. I know players have a hard time being like, this is, I can't play this as land because I have so much value here. Even though I have two other lands. Best time to play is turn one, play into tap. Just, just, uh, you know, you got, you got to get over the fact of, like every card has to have maximum value. It it doesn't. Like that's why they're in there as mold old face cards. Don't be afraid. Anyways, enough of my spiel. Turn two. Let's see what we got. We got a land. Even though I top deck the land, I have a bunch of lands. I don't feel bad because now I have land drops. 
I'm not playing a blue deck, uh, green deck, which you can ramp. Um, I, I can ramp with Orvar after turn three or four. But uh, more lands, the merrier. It's great. So I play this island here. Play my Sapphire Medallion, which I'll put right there in the corner. That's a very important piece of our combo, so it's great to have it. If you can see here, we got Venser. We got most of the combo, actually. Uh, Spellseeker will get your Whim of Volrath. Venser can just bounce everything they have. So we might be able to actually execute this combo. Raven form, destroy some nasty creatures. You know. Okay, turn three. Agent Treachery. Well, that helps with Venser. You can steal everything or bounce everything. All right. So let's see how this actually works. So let's actually see what's going on here. You can play a land here. Of course, you can play land every turn. Um, so you play Orvar on turn three with your Sapphire Medallion. You don't want to do that because when you play Orvar, you want to be able to um, uh, protect it or uh, get value right away. So what we're going to do is we're going to hmm, do Spell Seeker right here. And it costs two because of Sapphire Medallion. We're going to get our best card. As I mentioned, Mind Games is not our best card here. Um, we get Whim of Volrath right here. This is our best card in the deck. We're going to get that because we got Sapphire Medallion. We're going to shuffle our deck right here. Live shuffling. Okay, I'm going to cut. Oh, gosh. Bam, that's our card. Next turn. Okay, so this will start our engines right there. And remember, it's got... Um, it's an instant too, so you don't have to play on your turn, unless you you know need to need it for your turn. Turn four. So this is the turn. This is the amazing turn we want to do. Orvar, trait doctoring. Okay, that's kind of like whim of Volrath. Sephir just does doesn't let you replay things unless you cipher. We'll see again, if you can see our situation here, if you were to keep this for value, now you play land, 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 then play this on turn. You know. Turn four, you could play Orvar and nothing else. That's why it's so important. If, if you have a chance to play these, turn one, play it. Okay, so what can we do? We'll play Orvar right here, right there. And then we have one mana. Okay, so this is what happens. If they try to kill Orvar, what we do is we have an instant speed, not this card, because you don't want this card, this card. Dream Script, right? If they kill it, what you can do is you can target Orvar, make a copy, Legend of Rule, get rid of the original one, put it back in your command zone. Um, so that's how you can save him uh, from getting destroyed. Right. Let's see here. One in a spell, it targets one or more other permanent. Oh, you can't target Orvar. Never mind. Never mind. Ignore that. You know, that's why I have to read my cards over and over again. All right. So you have to just pray. Praying that Orvar survives. If not, what you do is you uh do your sapphire medallion um you know what we could do is essentially entwine we could untap this uh tap our sapphire medallion like that let's see if we have that card right here sapphire medallion right that make a copy and then you still have a man up right there then you say go we have nothing else to do so here's where the magic begins if orvar survives if not, you could recast it because you got two Sapphire Medallions. Uh, turn five. Land. Land. Perfect. All right. We cut to the right place. Play our land. Okay. So this is the trick here. Um, so we don't go infinite. Um, but we can do a lot of damage here. We could say go. We could exile something. Raven form. Cost one blue. Um, we only, always exile our own creature if we necessary to make a copy of it. The creature still gets exiled. Um, but now we get Whim of Volrath. We could just, uh, let's see here. Hmm. We'll just copy an island. So essentially what you're going to do is, this does go infinite, is that you let everybody go. You copy, you play Whim, copy an island, put this back. Make an island, tap the island, because you got two Sapphire Medallions. Copy this, so you make infinite islands, 
Um, because every, every time you make an island, it comes into play untapped. So make another island here. Comes into play untapped. Well, snow cover island, don't forget that. But untapped, you tap one blue. Whim the island here. Again, it comes to play untapped. So you have infinite islands. Uh, tapped islands, essentially. Then this is in your hand here. Oops, take this. So next turn, you untap with your infinite mana. Right here, you can kill Orvar as many times as you want because you can bring it back. Draw a card. This goes infinite as well. So with your infinite mana, what you're going to do is Venser, uh, cast Whim of Volrath on Venser, bounce everything, and it doesn't really matter because if they play a land, you bounce it again. Uh, and then you can slowly attack them with Orvar. And Spellseeker over and over again because if they play a land, you bounce it. You play land, you bounce it. You play anything, you bounce it. You just bounce everything constantly. Uh, so yeah, that's how the deck goes infinite. Sapphire and Dialing is very important. Whim of Volrap is very important here. I did tell you that um, earlier you can go infinite with uh, um, the Coveted Jewel, which is more fun, you know, because this allows you to not have Sapphire Medallion can help you dig for this sapphire medallion because you just tap this for three pay this with buyback um, copy this makes an untap one draw you know draw three cards such like that and keep going and going until you can draw enough cards to do things find your sapphire medallion or wherever you need to find so this is a deck it's super fun again you gotta sit there I, I think what you need to do is, what well, I recommend, I shouldn't say need, what I recommend you do is think through your turns, think how you can um, target things, what's the best thing to target, make copies of, because there's so many targets now. You got your lands, you got your medallion, you have you can't do the Orvar. Uh, you can target, target Spellseeker. If you have Tribute Mage, you can target that. Um, you can target, you know, even Wayfarer's Bobble, you could target. Uh, so there's lots of things to target. Again, oh, I forgot to mention, like with the whim of all wrath, you just say I tell your opponents every time I cast a spell, I'm gonna name uh, Swamp to Island. That's it. <laughs> I'm just gonna, and it just does nothing. You know, I'm I'm always, always go from Swamp to Island or from always go to blue. You know, like black to blue, red to blue. Don't go because if you go target this and say, you know, I want an island to swamp, it's gonna turn into a swamp, I think. Let's see here, one color word. I'm not sure if this actually turns this to a swamp, who knows, but it doesn't tell end of turn anyways. It, it's, it's not permanent swamp, but always stay safe and just go, always go to island, always go to um, uh, blue. All right, so if you enjoy this deck tech, enjoy going infinite with Orvar, because it's so powerful. Give this uh, video a thumbs up. Hit that smash that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Um, there's the TCG player affiliate link in the description below. Deckless description below. And as always, have a wonderful day.